Hi everyone, my name is Michelle from AIM Human Performance and we want to help you assess, improve, and maintain your health. For years, I was always confused why I could perform the same workout and yet have two totally different reactions to that workout. One time, the workout would feel great. I would feel strong, capable, and could recover the following day. Other times, I would do the exact same workout and feel awful. The workout felt exhausting, sometimes I couldn't even make it through, and the next day I was sore. I just figured those bad workouts were lack of sleep, stress, or I just blamed myself for being lazy on those days. In talking with other females though, I learned I wasn't alone in this observation. It turns out there's a perfectly good reason why the same workout can have two different outcomes. The answer, hormones. Here's a quick refresher course on the menstrual cycle in case you don't remember your junior high health class. The average menstrual cycle is 28 days and can be divided into two phases. The first phase begins the day your period starts and runs approximately 14 days. It's called the follicular phase. The second phase, or days 15 through 28, are called the luteal phase. So what in the world does this have to do with exercise? Well, the follicular phase, which are those days 1 through 14, are often also called the low hormone phase because estrogen is generally low during this time. Studies have shown that during this phase, women make greater strength gains and produce more force when strength training. We are also likely to feel less pain and recover faster. The second phase, or the luteal phase, is the high hormone time. Estrogen and progesterone levels are on the rise and peaking. Unfortunately, this means we have a much harder time making muscle, tolerating the heat, even our coordination and reaction time is hindered. These hormones impact our metabolism and how we fuel our muscles. They even impact our cardiac output, heart rate, and breathing rate. All of this means exercise feels harder and we can't recover as well. All of this information perfectly explains why one workout performed at different times during the month can have two completely different outcomes. That doesn't mean though that we have to suffer through the high hormone phase and sacrifice our exercise and health goals during those two weeks. With strategic exercise and dietary interventions, we can offset many of the unwanted side effects from the high hormones. Consider tracking where you are in your cycle and seeing if you perform better at some times versus others. How comforting to know that there is a logical reason for the highs and lows we experience during exercise. I hope you'll keep this new information in mind as you approach exercise in the future. Maybe we all could be a bit kinder to ourselves and our bodies. If you'd like to learn more about this topic and specific strategies and interventions, reach out to us and stay tuned for much more videos on this topic.